Greetings and welcome to another MSG Coffee Quip. Today's topic is going to be more geodemographic fun. With us today, we have uh, the head of MSG's ge geodemographic team, Dennis Dalby, and of course, the Swami of MSG, David Malarik. So, Dennis, what do you have for us today? So today we'll be discussing suburban geography, or the suburbs. We'll be looking at uh, how suburban geography is defined, or in this case, not defined by the census, as you'll see in a minute. Uh, we'll be looking at the components of suburban geography, which include urban, suburban, and rural. And then we'll be looking at ways that we use suburban geography with other geographic geographies to determine whether or not those uh, underlying geographies are considered urban, suburban, or rural. Okay, so here in this first map that you see, we have uh, the CBSA or metropolitan area of Philadelphia. Okay. It consists of three principal cities. Principal cities are the core uh, economic centers where the uh, counties are dependent upon. Uh, so the metropolitan area uh, are usually grouped together by the counties related to these economic centers. So if you want to see how we define how the census defines urban, we'll go to the next slide. The census defines urban as being within the principal city and then any block outside of the principal city that meets a specific population threshold. So, okay, so, so Dennis, if I can ask a quick question here. So the shaded area, the, the, the orange area, that those are the, the blocks, the census blocks that the U.S. Census every 10 years would say these are urban areas. This, these are where there's a lot of development, a lot of people residing, and they classify them as, as an urbanized area. The gray areas or the, the unshaded areas is where it's rural, so it's either farmland, undeveloped land, woodlands, whatever, correct? Correct. But the, one thing to note here is that the census uh, does not define or recognize neither suburban or rural areas. Uh, but it's assumed that anything that's not urban is rural. So, yes, yeah, so in this area, we see the CBSA county, counties, and anything in gray, yes, would be considered rural. So, so it's important to note that the federal government or really any government entity does not define a, a suburban area. Suburban is more of a colloquialism, correct? Correct. It's, yep. it's, mm -hmm. And suburban can mean different things in different parts of the country, correct? Correct. Right. Okay. okay. So this, this map here you see is how we take the urbanized area defined by the census and create a suburban uh, portion, or you should say separate out an urban area from suburban and rural. Uh, so what you see here are our definitions. And the way this works is that we take any block that's within the principal cities of the CBSA and they remain coded urban. Anything outside of the principal cities that was coded urban by the census is now identified as suburban. And then of course the remaining areas in gray here, uh, they'll stay rural or everything else. So in, in its simplest form, we're taking we're taking the, the urbanized areas as defined by the census and just simply splitting that into now an urban versus suburban characteristics, leaving the rural area as it was. Right. Correct. OK. So if we go to the next slide here, we can see some differences in numbers comparatively from the census. And you see here the source 2010. There, there will be updated numbers for this uh, for 2020. Um, but just for this example, we're looking at the comp comparing urban and rural defined by the census, and then our definitions where we include a suburban category. So as I look at this table, I, I, I noticed that the rural count of population increased with our urban, suburban, and rural definitions versus what the census indicates. Can you explain that? Right. Well, we used to have two separate definitions. Our first definition used to include micropolitan areas where we would apply a suburban uh, ring, if you will, the outside area of the micropolitan cities uh, and define those as suburban. But as it turns out, these uh, centers of population, I guess you could say, micropolitan principal cities, aren't really large enough in population to really have suburbs. So later on down the line, we, we, take, we took the urban blocks within micropolitan areas and converted them all to rural. So that's why you see that slight increase in the rural population uh, okay. compared to the census with ours. 
So for people who don't realize, CBSAs really have two components, the metropolitan statistical areas, which most of us recognize as the old traditional MSAs, and the micropolitan areas, which are smaller metropolitan areas, but they don't meet the characteristics or the definition of a metropolitan area. Correct? Correct. Right. Okay. Okay, right, so, so then we can, we can ahead, take this one step further, right? We can we can apply an urban, suburban, rural definition to just about any kind of geography or polygon, right? And I think this example here is we're taking a zip code and we're splitting it into urban, suburban, and rural, correct? Right. So what you see here is a zip code that we randomly selected within the Philadelphia CBSA having uh, different layers of suburban geography. Let's call it different layers, just different category. So mm -hmm. the red you see is the area that used to be urban defined by the census that we've converted to suburban. And I guess, of course, the gray for me is everything else, the rural. Traditional ways of trying to uh, apply an inclusion value to overlaying geographies that have this sort of checkerboard type appearance uh, is to use land area. So if we use land area in this example, we see that the suburban uh, population is less than 20%. The rural area is 80 percent for just the zip code. Mm -hmm. If you apply, if you remove the area inclusion and use something like a population inclusion or a household inclusion, you see that the numbers are almost flipped. Okay, so in this example, we see that suburban areas have almost 80 percent of the households within the zip code, compared to when you look at land area, it's less than 20 percent. So this gives us a little bit of a, a more accurate description or or real world similarity to what we should be seeing. Uh, so the benefit, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, so so the yellow dots represent um, households in our ABS frame, and the the portions of the yellow dots that fall into the orange or reddish shaded area is where the concentration of the population is. So given that it's like an 80-20 split, it would seem conceivable that a lot of those yellow dots are actually representing MDUs, large apartment buildings, because there's a more concentration, concentrated area of population in those areas, whereas those that fall into the, the gray areas are probably single family homes and they're more spread out and not as densely situated. Right. 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 Okay. So one of the other uh, advantages that we have here uh, when trying to define uh, other geographies as being urban, suburban or rural is by using our ABS frame. Uh, by using ABS, we're able to um, update these geographic uh, changes two times a year. So for, I don't want to say competitors, but for other people who define suburban, may depend on area-based inclusion. Others right. may depend or, or, on- Or they're relying on decennial-based census data, which, you know, at this time, you, in this point in time is 10 years out of date because the 2020 data hasn't come out yet. But with our ability to utilize ABS, we can provide more current estimates of population densities and hence enhance our urban, suburban, rural definitions. That's correct. Gotcha. Okay, great. Well, thank you, Dennis. This was very informative. Yeah, it's, it's always an education, always an education. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Dennis and Dave, and we'll see you on the next MSG Coffee Quip. Thank you.